Taro and I like to go out on our walks is I braid the neck loop into his mane so it stays put and doesn't fall down when he puts his head down. I have a halter on him in case things get sticky. That was actually his suggestion um, because that helps both of us to feel more secure like if there's a big scary garbage truck coming or something out on the roads. But when not needed, we're just on a neck loop. My rope connected to the neck loop is not tied. This is an important energetic positioning I hold with my horses. I really go against this whole thing of, you've got to not let go of that horse no matter what. I say to them, if you need to bolt, you go ahead and bolt. That's fine. So with this thing, I just let go of one end and it'll just pull through. And the danger of him stepping on the rope and cranking his neck or seriously damaging his face is gone because the rope will just pull out. Who, 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 who. Ooh, so he's now listening, so I'm going to push on the rear. Who? Taro? Taro. Who? 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 Taro. Okay. 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 Who? 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 So that was my first ask to stop. And we were already all the way down the barn road and out into freedom. Who? Who? So let him go again. But you see, even though he wasn't listening to me, he wasn't running away. I asked to stop and then I was pushing on the rump because that sometimes if you can get them to circle, that helps them to stop. So I'm going to see, this is so hard to be the one leading and the one filming, but I'm going to see how he goes and then I may have to turn off the camera and just really focus on working with him. This is our first time out in a neck loop about six months so <laughs> yeah who 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 taro who 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 taro taro who good boy good boy so I had to work for that but he still listened so Good boy. Good boy, Taro. So I'm not feeling like I'm connected with him because I'm really distracted and busy with the camera. And this is hugely hampering our conversation. So, you know, similar to that would be if you were taking your horse out and you were with a friend or you were on your phone or you know, your mind was elsewhere. You see, I don't have a good level of connection. He's, he's listening to me. He's with me, but he's not like with me. We're not one. So I'm going to turn off the phone and uh, get into that state. So as soon as I turned off the video and connected with him, I was able to sense that he is just way too jacked up right now to be on the neck loop. And he needs to spend some time just walking with me, getting with me. We need to get across this really busy road that's coming up where the cars go really fast. We need to clear a whole bunch of stuff, put some miles on the trail, so to speak. And then maybe we move to the neck loop when we're really bonded and connected and together. So I'm just gonna keep coming in and out like this and uh, turning it off to get in connection with him. So this is Montaro's idea now. We've crossed this road, which no doubt you're gonna hear a lot of cars coming down. Uh, it's quite busy. People go about 80 kilometers an hour on this road. He's crossed it and he wants to eat right next to it. So we were eating right next to it on that side and now we're eating right next to it on this side. I can't believe we're getting this long of a stretch with no cars. Probably so you can hear me. Thank you. Um, and he's not showing any signs of what... No, no. Now that's... So now here look. This is a very steep ditch with a dike. That's not comfortable for me. So, Taro, come on, love. Back. Back. Good boy. No, 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 no. Okay, that one. Okay. 
So just after we got across the road, after I'd been turning the camera on and off and kind of coming in and then out of connection with him, uh, he, we get to the other side of the road, the super busy road, and he wants to go on the ditch alongside the road, which is such a bad idea because I also have two dogs off leash. So I go, no, no, Tara, and I, I pull him around. I'm still videoing. I pull him around and he steps on the side of my foot, like just like crap, like really hard. Like I'm like, oh. so that makes me, my first response to things like that is I get really angry. I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill you now. I'm going, oh, it's on. And I just, all that rises up in me. And then I go, stop, stop, stop. And then I move into like, you've totally betrayed me. I'm out here, I'm in connection with you and you fucking stomp me. You so and then as I'm verbalizing, cause verbalizing gets the layers of emotion through. And then as I'm verbalizing, I'm like, okay, you stomped me. You stopped me dead. You went enough. So, okay. So I put the camera away and I'm listening. And the message from him was, uh, Basically, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's like, this is his second time out alone without the herd. Um, and I'm trying to take him out in a neck loop. For, so I started the whole thing off way out in outer space and he basically had enough. He's like, you're so redonkulous, I can't even stand you anymore. So I'm gonna slap you around the side of the head, but I'm gonna use your foot because I know you don't want me to touch your head. So it was that whole kind of thing and me going, oh, I'm such a moron. and. What am I doing? And then him, and then dialoguing it out and going, well, okay, but I'm motivated my, by my desire to help people, right? There's so many people who are like, I want to be with my horses like you. Where can I learn how to do this? So then I think, okay, well, if I film what I'm doing, then they can watch and they can take that to their own horses and then that'll make their lives so much better. Like it really is motivated by altruism and wanting to give back to the horse so the horses have a better life and a better connection and more freedom in their lives and what he said to me was basically like you have four untrained horses here <laughs> so how about you and I map it first and then when you go to teach it to one of the others then you have someone else filming you so that you can stay entirely focused on the horse and your connection with the horse. Because what are you filming here anyway? You're filming some discombobulated idiot who's out of connection with her horse, trying to show how connected she is to her horse and trying to show how we deal with challenges from a place of connection, except that we're not connected because you're connected to your camera. Like the whole thing was like, you totally see why he went bam, enough, right? Like he was just like, you've gone over the edge. So I was like, okay, okay, I totally, totally get that. And then um, we'll let that sink in. And I was like, okay, camera's gone, camera's away, and we're just gonna be in connection. So then we just keep eating and, you know, and as I was verbalizing, this is the amazing thing. So I was like, okay, as, as I'm verbalizing, you know, we're walking, cause he's, he's grazing. And I'm going, okay, well, he hasn't broken my foot, but I'm not sure if he's not sheared the skin off the side of my foot and my foot's really sore. So probably need to head for home because what if I can't walk too well after a while? But as soon as I start verbalizing the message he was trying to give me and I got beneath the layers of anger, beneath the layers of betrayal, beneath the layers of hurt and actually received the message, I could feel the injury leaving my foot. And by the time I had verbalized everything he wanted to tell me, my foot was 100% fine. And it's, this, is, this is what I talk about in my health business, that you know when your body gives you a symptom, it's a message. It's your body trying to communicate. In fact, it's your higher self using your body to try and communicate to you. And as soon as you receive the message and make the shift or make the changes, your body releases the symptom. So it was fascinating for me to, to be a part of that exact same process where the horse in his wisdom is very aligned with the divine, delivers me a message using my physical injury to my physical body. But the same thing, as I get the message, as I go through the layers and I receive it and I say, okay, this is what I will action differently. 
Because it's one thing to receive a message, but unless you action it, unless your intention and your purposefulness changes, it can't release because you haven't walked the full journey. So I put the phone away. I did not touch it again for the whole time we were out. My foot is completely fine. It's completely fine now. We, so then we continued on. This, the story was not over. We continued on and we hit the first house. We were out just outside the first house, which is still only about 100 feet from the busy main road. And the garbage truck came along and I was like, oh, is he gonna be okay with that? And he's usually okay with big trucks. He's pretty stoic. And he was fine and we were about 25 feet away from the garbage truck. And he was totally fine, totally unconcerned until the garbage truck <laughs> grabbed the garbage bins, whoo, hydraulic lift to dump them in the back and he lost his mind. He went from this to dead flat out bolt in a millisecond there was no way I could hold on to him I just let go of the rope he bolt and my only thing was don't bolt for home because that's across the busy road this is the road that Montaro and I crossed that I did not want him running back across to get home to his herd right here this is where we came across and that's where he had his freak out and thank God he didn't. He went around and he went down one field and then far back into the neighbor's field. And so I didn't run after him. I didn't, I called him once and then I just stood here by the road and I put like an energetic wall here to say, you, I don't care what you do. I don't care how long it takes you to calm down. I don't care how far I have to walk if I have to go get you, but do not come through this road. And he just ran his circle and his tail was up and he was just, I mean, he was, it was magnificent to watch if I hadn't been so scared out of my mind. Um, I w and again, I wish I'd videoed that, but oh well. Um, and he came back and he was bolting across this huge, I don't know, it was about 10 acres. He was bolting straight for me. And I just held this space and I put my hands and I was like this and my energy was like, this is life or death. You must not cross this barrier. You, it's okay if you run and you run down that way, but you must not cross me and go to the road. <coughs> and he came bolting straight for me. And I was just like, who, who? And I just held that. And in myself, I was dead calm and my heart was wide open with love for him. So I wasn't in anger. I wasn't in, don't you cross me? I, no, I was dead calm, sunk into the earth. My heart was wide open. Who? He comes to a sliding stop right in front of me, drops his head down and eats. <sighs> so I, you know, I was like, Taro, you're so amazing. So I walk slowly because by this time he's here, I just walk a couple steps over and I, I don't go to grab him because I'm not in that space. I'm in trust. He has just shown me I can be scared out of my freaking mind and I will come back to you. I, he did not bolt for his herd. That's where I thought he's going for his herd. That's only his second time away from his herd. He's been with his herd his entire life. The bot, he did not. He came back to me and stopped and dropped his head to graze. And that, I was like, this is, this is the whole point of it. You can't even control a human who's losing their mind or a dog. Right? Your dog's gonna bolt, your dog's gonna bolt. Like, good luck, you've got a big, a good sized dog. There's no way you can control a 1,200 pound horse when they go into, uh, I'm about to be killed mode. They're, they have to discharge that, they have to go. But what stands is that connection, is this pathway of intimacy and mutual respect and bedrock friendship leads to a connection that is just, blows me away and you know I have to experience a bit of trauma because <laughs> that's how I roll you know I'm not safe step-by-step -step kind of girl so I bring it on myself um, but you know and I walked over to him and I just gently picked up the rope which was still intact he, he didn't shank himself but the rope didn't fully pull out either and I picked it up and I just scratched his belly while he grazed and that was really important too to okay, we've come through this incredibly traumatic frightening experience now, grazing is a natural way a horse calms itself and brings its nervous system down. 
So again, if I was standing in fear, I go, okay, thank God that's over, let's go home, right? Well, no, you haven't completed that circle. You haven't come back to calmness and wholeness and connection. So we just hung out and I let him graze and I scratched his belly and I continued sending my energy down. And then what I realized is, you know what? He ran and discharged his trauma and I didn't. It's still shaking inside of me. So I start doing this next to him while he's, while he's grazing. And I'm like, I'm like this. And then I'm like, I don't know what. And then and, you know, people watching me must have been like, you're out of your mind, I don't care. <laughs> and after I did that, just for a couple minutes, I was like, okay, flight or, flight or fight, like whew, the whole adrenaline cascade, I moved it through. I gave it away to exit my own body. And then I come back to the breath and I come back to me. And he's totally dead quiet the whole time I'm doing this. It's like, he knows exactly what I'm doing. He's like, yeah, like you should have run when I ran. <laughs> I don't want you just standing there instead of discharging it. But, you know, so then we come down and I go, okay, thank God, let's go home. On our way home, it's not over yet. On our way home, he doesn't want to go home because he's like, I have hardly been out anywhere. I am stuck in that stupid, like they have 20 odd acres here. For, for horses, that's nothing. That's like, that's like a backyard, right? So he's like, I've been nowhere. I've done nothing. I'm so bored. I so need to range an adventure. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, I'm exhausted. That was so traumatic. So we have a little battle on the road because he doesn't want to come home. And I'm like, and then I have another conversation. I go, Taro, I understand exactly how you feel. I, if I could, I would. We would go and we would do another hour or whatever, but I'm, look at me, I have rope burn. I'm like, I can't do anymore. This is, this has pushed me far enough. I'm, I'm really done. And you know what? If you argue with me, if you make it hell for me to come out with you and you fight me when I say I need this, then I'm not gonna take you out. I'm gonna take the others out. And so this is a two-way street. And so it was so interesting because at first we moved through these layers of connection and <clears throat> intimate friendship and I'm with you and me doing everything to be in mutual respect for the horse. And then right on the heels of it is having a conversation where he's like, I'm not going. And I'm like, I need to go home. I'm not going backing up like this and I'm like oh do not cause me trouble now not after everything we've just gone through and so I had I had the same talk that um, my brother had with my teenage son <laughs> when my teenage son was starting to get out of control in the home um, and he I had the same talk with him I said Montaro I said you hold the power in this relationship because you're bigger than me and you're stronger than me and so because you hold the place of power, and yes, I have a control device on your head, but as we've just seen, that means nothing, right? Like we pretend we have a control device and you will listen to it to a certain amount, but when push comes to shove, you hold all the power in this relationship. So guess what, buddy? You hold the responsibility too. It is your responsibility to keep me safe and to honor my feelings and my limitations. You have the fitness, your fitness level is, a hundred times my fitness level. So when I go, I'm tired, I need to go home. Like you need to honor that because if you push me too far, I'm not hanging out with you. I'm not gonna take you out. And he just, he just looks at me and he goes, <sighs> and then we start walking. And then, and then he's, he's still pulling out. I'm like, no, I'm done. Like now it, the balance switches over to me. Now we got to take care of Jeannie and we're heading this way. And then when I felt him release, then I kind of went, but I, I do see you, I understand your point. And I don't want this to just be about, you know, we're an equal relationship until I've had enough and then I'm the boss, right? Like, and, and so I was like, you gave to me and we're now halfway, you know, we'd walked a good, I don't know, 50, 60 feet. And I was like, okay, you know what? When we pass that telephone pole, <clears throat> you can go on the side and eat grass for a while. Because I'm gonna show you, I'm honoring your need. I'm honoring your desire, but it was interesting because I really felt Montara's a very strong, he's the leader of this herd. So there's an element of mutuality, but there also needs to be an element of respect. He has to respect me and I have to respect myself and protect myself and stand in my own strength to say, buddy, you do this to me 
I'm not taking you out. You're going to you're going to fucking rot in this field. That's what's going to happen. Is that what you want? With all the strength of my full self to go, you don't get to treat me like this. This is an equal relationship. That doesn't just mean that I like run around after you all the time. What do you want? What can I like you know, because it can we can swing too far the other way when we're trying to honor our horses and we're trying to respect them and we're trying to be in an equal relationship with them. But equality involves a pendulum swinging. Sometimes your need is greater and sometimes my need is greater. And so he didn't want to go home, but my need was greater. When he needed to bolt, his need was greater. I'm letting him go and I'm not trying to catch him. I'm like, you bolt for as long as you have to. I'm standing here in calmness. I'm now holding the space of you take care of your needs and I'm here to keep you safe by not blowing through here onto the road. So it was just this illustration of this back and forth dance. So as we come home, we get close to the home and I go, man, I'm so done, we're going in. He's like, I don't wanna go in. And I'm like, and that's when we had another discussion and he just stood there and he just gazed at me and he's like, I need this so badly. I need adventure. I need to range. I've, I've hardly gone anywhere. It's, I've been in here like, and it's because of the winter and the weather's been so bad. And you know, a lot of the other horses have gotten taken out, but he hasn't, he's been holding back and waiting for his turn. And so again, I saw his need and I said, okay, you know what? We'll continue down because we can swing in and come in way at the other 10 acres down. There's another entrance to the pasture. Let's do that. So we set off. And all of a sudden I felt a renewed sense of energy. I was like, oh, that actually feels okay to me. I feel like I can cope with that. We get down there and again, he doesn't want to go in. And that's when I'm like, too far on many occasions so it's not hard to tip me over into oh what the fuck let's go for it right so I sit there I see a trail I'm like yeah there's a trail what if there's trails back in there that we didn't discover so we go off on another adventure but what I did is I picked up a branch because now I'm like I need I can feel that my energy's coming you know t you know to where I need to take more care of myself so I pick up a tree branch and I use that for when, because the trail narrows and he's behind me, but again, he doesn't have any training in following me without running into me or trying to run past me. So I pick up this tree branch and I just hold it horizontally and I go, who? And it's funny, if, if you do my arm, he'll push through it. If I put the tree branch, he automatically stops. Like that's a tree, I can't go through that. So we practice that. And we go and we explore these trails for like 10 or 15 minutes. And again, an, an incredible learning opportunity of learning how to walk single file on a trail. And every time I put the stick up, I say who, so I'm pairing it to the verbal signal. And, and that's something that enlivens me and gives me energy. Cause I'm like, wow, we've progressed. We've moved forward. We've, we've made, we've um, enriched his learning so that we can go out on like backwoods trails. And I don't have to worry when the trail narrows to this that he's gonna run through me or go over me or try to shove me aside or because he'll have had this basis of training. And then when we came back out again, I said, now we're done, we're going in the gate. And he's like, I don't wanna go. And I go, no, we're really done. And we're going in the gate. He paused, he looks at me, he walks over to the gate and he goes in without trouble. And so the whole thing was just beautiful, kind of like a dance, but more like a martial art. It was more like a, like doing a martial art exercise with someone where you're the a thing and then you go back and then you're turning around and then you're forward and then you're, and it was just this flow of, this is how dynamic real relationship is. And when we take into account everyone's needs as being equally valuable. Um, and just, I mean, just another day at the ranch, right?